Hello learners, I am Mohini Arora, I am HOD Computer Science and today I will be discussing with you the topic of computer fundamentals. So this particular session will help you understand various output devices. You will learn various types of outputs and the devices that are used to get that output from the computer. And after that you will also be learning about various storage devices, their types, their usage, their features and how we use various devices at various places according to our need. So I hope uh, you will benefit from this session. Let's move on with the session. Now let's see how results are achieved. Which devices help us to view the final results that we get after processing of the input. So let's have a look at the output devices. These are the devices through which we see the output from a computer and the commonly used devices that we will be covering are the monitor, printer, plotter, speakers or headphones and the projectors. So we start with the monitor. Each one of you must have seen the monitor. It is also known as VDU just like a television screen. The output that we receive on the monitor is known as soft copy. There are two types of monitors. We have CRT and TFT LCD or LED monitors. CRT stands for cathode ray tube. These monitors are getting obsolete now. They were huge monitors used to consume large amount of power. But now we have the flat screen monitors which may be a TFT that is a thin film transistor or an LCD, a liquid crystal display, or an LED that is light emitting diode monitors. All these monitors are the new technology monitors which consume very less power, are very light in weight and give excellent results as compared to the CRT monitor. Next device is the printer. The output that is received through the printer is on the paper and we call it hard copy. Some of the commonly used printers are the dot matrix printer, the inkjet printer, the laser printer and the thermal printer. Let's have a look at all these one by one. A dot matrix printer uses a print head to print characters on paper. You can see the picture of the dot matrix printer here. The print head moves in back and forth up and down motion of the page and it strikes on an ink soaked ribbon. That ribbon then touches the paper and the characters are printed on the paper. Since each character that is being printed through a dot matrix printer is made up of dots. If you see it closely, you will see that each character is made up of small small dots. So that is why we call it as a dot matrix printer. It is a relatively slower printer, can give us only black and white printouts and is comparatively cheaper than other printers. Next printer is the inkjet printer. As the name says, it uses ink. The ink is an ionized ink which is thrown on a sheet of paper. This, the magnetized plates that are there in the printer, they direct the ink on the paper and according to the signal that is coming from the CPU, the printing is done in desired shapes. This is obviously producing a better print than the dot matrix printers. They are also known as line printers as the output is produced line by line. In case of dot matrix printer, the output was produced character by character. In case of line printer, the output is produced line by line. But they are comparatively slower. But yes, as compared to laser printers, they are cheaper. They give us the colored output, but they are slower as compared to the laser printers. So next we have the laser printer. The latest technology printers give us wonderful output both in color and black and white. Entire page is printed at a time. Entire page is transmitted to the drum before the toner is applied. And that is why laser printers are also known as page printers. They are very good in printing graphics and they can print around 4 to 20 pages of text per minute. So very very useful printers especially in commercial world. Very commonly used printers are the laser printers available in both black and white and color formats. 
Then we have a thermal printer. These produce images by pushing electrically heated pins against the heat sensitive paper. Very inexpensive, used in calculators, in billing machines, in fax machines. But the disadvantage with them is that they produce a low quality print and the paper tends to curl and fade after a few weeks or months. You must have seen the parking slips being given to you. They have a thermal printer. If you keep that particular slip or a bill for some days, you will see that the, the ink fades. So that is what is the drawback of a thermal printer that the print quality is quite low but they are available in small sizes and hence are quite portable ones to be used at specific locations. Next output device is the plotter. You can see the image of the plotter on the screen. A plotter is a huge printer sort of a thing which helps in printing vector graphics with the pen. It is basically designed to produce large drawings or images such as construction plans for buildings or blueprints for mechanical objects. They are quite expensive and are used widely in computer aided designing that is CAD and computer aided manufacturing applications. You have two types of plotters available. The flatbed plotter which is of relatively small size. It can be kept on the table just like a scanner and you have a specific size of paper on which a flatbed plotter can print. You cannot exceed a particular size of the paper that is set through the plotter. Drum plotter on the other hand has the roll of paper that is used. The length of the paper can be unlimited and you can print huge drawings, huge maps through this particular type of plotter. This must be a common sight, the speakers used to play audio files. So through the speakers, you get the audio output. You get the output in the form of sound, music, dialogues, whatever through the speakers. A very, very commonly used output device. Various types of speakers are available in the market and the price increases as the audio quality increases of the speaker. These are some other output devices, the projector that is used to view the output on a large scale, maybe on a wall or on a screen, we can see the output so that more number of people are able to view the output. Then we have the headphones, if we don't want the sound or the audio output that we are getting to be listened uh, by everybody, only one person should be able to listen it, then we use the headphones. Let us now learn various devices that form the memory unit of the computer. We must always remember that memory unit is also one of the most important parts of the computer because without data storage, we can't work on a computer. We work on a computer because I am able to store unlimited amounts of data. So before starting with the memory devices, let's see how we measure memory. The basic unit of memory is a byte and a byte is constituted by 8 bits. If I talk about a bit, a bit is a binary unit. It can be either 0 or 1. So 8 such bits form a byte. And since a byte is a very small unit as compared to the memory capacities that we are handling nowadays, we have higher units of memory like kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes and so on. The slide here shows you the relationship between these various units. Nowadays, we generally talk about gigabytes, terabytes and even yottabytes are coming these days. So, when you go out in the market, you talk about data storage capacities. Today's uh, electronic generation is talking about nothing less than gigabytes. So, let's now extend our study to various types of memory. We have two types of memory, primary memory and secondary memory. Primary memory is accessible directly by the CPU. RAM and ROM are two examples, are two types of primary memory. As soon as the computer is switched off, the contents of primary memory are lost. This is one of the major reasons why we moved on to secondary memory storage. Data can be stored and retrieved at much faster rate because it is inside the CPU, it is directly connected with the CPU. 
So, that is why the data accessing rate, the data retrieval rate is much higher in case of primary memory and it is more expensive than the secondary memories. Moving on to secondary memory, the main points include it can be located inside and outside the computer. For example, the hard disk is located inside but you have external hard disk also. The pen drive is outside. The other examples are floppy disk, magnetic disk, hard disk etc. And data in case of secondary memory storage devices does not get lost even after the computer is switched off. So we have a permanent storage of data through the secondary storage devices. So we talk about primary memory now. We have the random access memory, the first type of memory. As the name says random access, that means through this memory, we can randomly select and use any location of memory. There is no predefined uh, sequence that has to be maintained. We can choose any free space that is available and we can store and retrieve data. Since data can be written as well as read from this memory, that means we can store and we can retrieve, we can do both the operations. So this type of memory is also known as read-write memory. And this type of memory is volatile. When I say volatile, it means as soon as the computer is switched off, the data is lost. So that is why your teachers must be telling you to save your file. Why? Because when you are working on a file, your data is on RAM and RAM data will be lost as soon as the computer is switched off. But when you save your file on a hard disk, on a CD, on a pen drive, so those are secondary storage devices and they can store the data permanently. So the data loss does not occur in case of secondary memory but it occurs in case of RAM that is type of primary memory. The second type of primary memory is the ROM that is the read only memory. Again the name suggests its property that data can only be read from it. We cannot write, we cannot modify data once written onto ROM and it is non-volatile. Non-volatile means the data is not lost even if the computer is switched off. It stores some standard processing programs supplied by the manufacturer. Say suppose your input output system, your BIOS, when you switch on the system, your computer tests whether the system is opt. Your computer tests whether all the devices are attached properly or not. So this setting, this storage instructions are in the ROM. And the data is not getting lost even if the computer is switched off, that ROM BIOS is working. You have various types of ROMs that is PROM where P stands for programmable ROM. You can program your ROM only once. Once you program it, you cannot change it further. Next type is EEPROM, Erasable Programmable ROM. You can erase data using ultraviolet lights and reprogram it, restore it. And the last type of ROM is Electrically Erasable Programmable ROM. That means the data that is stored on these ROM can be erased using electrical signals and then reprogrammed again. So these are the basic types of ROMs. According to the requirement, we use a particular type of ROM that is there in your computer. Next type of memory that we will be covering is the cache memory. We have discussed before that primary memory is a memory which is very expensive. But yes, it has a very less access time. Secondary memory on the other hand is cheap but the access time is more. So cache memory comes somewhere in between. It enhances the performance of CPU. That is why it is known as CPU memory. It is a chip that is attached between the CPU and the main memory. What happens in this case is that cache memory stores the programs or data that are currently being executed or that are frequently being used by the CPU. Since this is a very fast memory having a very high processing speed, so data is processed, is accessed much faster than a conventional memory device. But then yes, these are very expensive types of memories and that is why they are used in limited amount and 
only that much amount of cache memory is used which can handle the current data requirements of a particular computer. Then finally, we have the secondary memories. Secondary memories are uh, you must be very aware with them, you must have seen hard disks, you must have seen CDs, pen drives, all these are secondary memories, they are quite inexpensive memories, their operating speed is slower, their cost per bit of storage is less and huge volumes of data can be stored on permanent basis using secondary memory. You can have DVDs, you can have Blu-ray discs which have very large shelf life which can be stored for long durations. So secondary memories come in very handy in such situations. Some of the primitive secondary memory storage devices are magnetic tapes, drums and floppy disks. Although these are not being used nowadays but we'll have a quick look at these primitive storage devices, the tapes that were used before for mainframes to store large amount of data. They are quite inexpensive and they are consisting of magnetic materials that store data permanently and they are very similar to the tape recorders that we used to have during the previous times. Next we have the magnetic disks. You must have seen the gramophone records. So a magnetic disk is just like a gramophone record. It rotates at very high speed inside the drive. Data is stored on both surfaces of the disks and each disk consists of a number of invisible concentric circles called tracks and the information is stored on these tracks. The presence of one means the data is present, absence means the data is not present. So 1 and 0 is stored accordingly. A floppy disk, it is similar to a magnetic disk with a case on it. It is generally of 3.5 inch in diameter and it can store up to 1.44 MB. It is a very cheap storage and a very portable storage but yes now these have become very obsolete. Now let us see the storage devices that are being used nowadays. First and foremost the hard disk, the most commonly used secondary storage device. Generally it is fixed inside the CPU. But we have external hard disks also which are portable which can be plugged in through the USB ports at various computers and they can store huge amounts of data and they have quite good appreciable amount of access time uh, to retrieve the data that is stored on it. The picture here shows you the functionality and the structure of the hard disk. You can see various disks are placed one above the other. Each disk is known as a platter and there are uh, movable heads which move on each platter. Data can be stored on both sides of each disk. So the, that is why the storage capacity of hard disk is quite large. And each disk is divided into tracks that is the concentric rings that you side of the slide. And you have each track further being divided into sectors. So data is stored in these tracks and sectors. And it can be retrieved through the movable head that is used to move around the disk uh, horizontally and vertically. So a set of numerous disks are stacked one above the other. Data is recorded electromagnetically in the form of concentric circles called tracks. And a read-write head as I mentioned before is mounted on the arm that is placed next to the disks. Next commonly used secondary storage device is the optical disk. It can also store large volumes of data and you can see various types of optical disks like CD-ROMs, like CD-R, read-write, DVD and a Blu-ray disk. If you talk about CD-ROM, the full form is compact disk read-only memory. These are made of reflective metals and the data that is written at the time of manufacturing only. Once it is written, you cannot remove that data. That CD is permanently having that particular data. It has quite good access time and it can store over 600 MB of data. And we can only read through this disk. We cannot write, we cannot make changes, we cannot store any further data on a CD-ROM. Next type of optical disk is a CD-R where R stands for recordable. In this type of CD, you can write data through the CD writer and the CD writer uses a special laser light to write data onto it. Once the data is burnt onto the CDR, 
then you cannot modify it. So you can record it only once using the writer, then you cannot further make changes onto it. We also have the rewritable CDs, that is why we call them CDRW. You can both do reading and writing, you can do modifications, you can erase data, delete files, write data as many times as you want. Then you have the DVD which stands for Digital Versatile Disk. It is of much larger storage capacities as compared to the previously discussed disks. That is why it is used to store movies, audio video files that take huge amount of space. And the last uh, storage device that we will be discussing is the flash memory. A flash memory, if I use the term pen drives, you will be more comfortable with that term. It is basically a type of memory, we call it a solid state memory also. It is a non-volatile memory and it can be used for storage in various consumer devices like mobile phones, like flash drives, like tablet computers and so on. It's very inexpensive and it consumes very less power, extremely durable. That is why these are increasingly being used in various devices, in computers, in portable pen drives. Since they can withstand extreme pressure, extreme temperature, they have a long shelf life. So these are very, very useful memories that you see with flash memories. This slide gives you the examples. The memory card is an example of flash memory. The SD card is an example of flash memory. The pen drive is an example of flash memory. So we have seen all these things and we can use them to the computer, the laptops, the tablets through the USB port that is available. So this brings us to the end of this session learners. I hope uh, you must have understood the various output devices. You must have seen how various output devices are used to generate different types of outputs and most importantly the memory devices. The session taught you about types of memories, why we use different types of memories at different places and how much data they can store and also how memory is measured. I hope this session was fruitful and you will be benefited from this session. Thank you.